The violence we see in our communities has become so common that many people have just become numb, thinking it's not my neighborhood, it's not my problem. I'm Bill Anderson, and that's exactly why we launched our Save Our Streets initiative, to remind everyone that it's all of our responsibility to come together and try to help those caught in the crossfire. It seems like a nearly daily occurrence that's devastating our community. We are following breaking news right now, a deadly shooting that just happened in West Philadelphia. Gun violence is an epidemic in Philadelphia, and a big part of that problem is drive-by shootings. After a year shattering records for gun deaths, our region is back on a violent track with no apparent solution in sight. A 16-year-old boy is in the hospital after being shot twice in the leg. But while many of the headlines would have you believe that this has become a tragic norm for many communities, there are at least two things that make these times different. First, the shockingly young age of many of both the victims and perpetrators of gun violence. Tonight, a teenager is charged with first degree murder in the death of eight year old Fantability. Delaware County District Attorney says by law, the 16 year old is responsible for the events. And second, contrary to popular belief, the gun violence is or at least should be a concern of more than just people in inner cities. And happening right now, the search is on to find whoever shot and killed a 13-year-old boy and injured two adults in Chester. The victim's mom describes her son as kind, loving, and ambitious. At least 10 bullets flying into a backyard where there were a handful of children and some adults. We know about and hear about the violence, but just knowing about it is not enough. We need to do something about it. My son was not a troublemaker. Nobody he just got into no fights. You know, he wasn't an angel, but he wasn't on the streets. No enemies, no nothing. These stories are real, and they're much more personal than just a news report. People in the neighborhood are scared. To death. To death. These are the stories of people whose day-to-day -day life, often by no fault of their own, leaves them caught in the crossfire. I don't know if the funds where I can just get up and move. If I can just get up and leave, I'd have been left. So now, this is about standing up and asking, what are we all willing to do? We need help. It's not that we even want it. We need it. So that's what we're trying to do. Will you join us? With outreach, communication, available resources, whatever it takes to save our streets. I say that everyone needs to get involved. I say that one life is too many, that no mother or father should have to bury their child, and that we need to begin to look at the brilliance and the possibilities that exist within our neighborhoods. Hey! When we hear Save Our Streets, that means so many different things to so many different people. But the point is that it's a call to action to bring all of us together. But the first step to trying to solve a problem is to fully understand it. There's always was a code of honor in the streets. No women, no children. These days, all you see is the women and children getting shot up and killed and it has to stop somewhere. We see the stories of violence in our communities every day, but rarely do we see and hear the impact that just trying to exist day to day has on so many. It's very frustrating because I feel like a lot of the people that are dying now are like my age or sometimes even younger than me. Like I'm 17, I just turned 17 in April. Um, we shouldn't be having to deal with stuff like this. I mean, it's kind of nerve wracking because like, you never know, like, I can go outside go to a store and I just get hit with a bullet. For some, it's the possibility that they could fall victim to random violence, but to others, that's their reality. Welcome to the store with my brother and our two friends. On the way back from the store, we finished getting what we were getting. Some guy just started shooting at us. Uh, cops said he fired about 15 shots, and I got hit in my hand, and luckily nobody else was injured. There's no age limit, gender, zip code, or in most circumstances, good reason for the violence that we're seeing. Even the kids that are, have gotten shot, it's either a misfire or something. And, but it's like, why does someone have to die because you misfired a gun that was aimed at someone else? So even the kids that are not involved are still involved. There's so many questions about the things that we're seeing throughout the area and so many different responses to We don't it. have enough people in the community that's doing it consistently. You know, people come out for the drives, people come out for the Instagram likes, people come out for the, you know, the notoriety and be able to say I was there at a time. But kids need something every day. But perhaps the only thing that we all agree on is that something has to be done and it's going to take all of our involvement because one way or the other, we're all affected. I'm just hoping that everything does change because I want to go back to the normal living where it's like everyone can actually just go outside 
without having to worry about if you're gonna get killed that day or like having your parents worry that you're gonna get killed that day. So now we act. This is a call to action to all of us to get involved, to ask ourselves daily, what can we do? All the community, real community leaders that are stepping up and getting real things done. We don't see that stuff on the news. We just see us killing each other, black and brown families, every day on the news across this country. But we rarely ever see the good work that we're doing out here. What will we do? I think the politicians aren't doing enough. I think they'll, they'll put out a statement when something happens, but they won't actually do any real hard work to get the community better. All you have to do is have the will to serve the youth. And that's it. If you care a little bit enough, it's not hard to learn how to mentor or how to really be consistent in the youth life. It's not much. Not for one day, one news story, one community cleanup, but as an ongoing effort to do whatever we can to save our neighborhoods, save ourselves, save our children, save our streets. Now what would you do if the violence was all around you, even taking your own family members, and you just didn't feel like you could escape? That's the reality of some of the people that we spoke to who every day are just praying for some help. You know, he stayed there myself for a while, and then while my son went to run, he shot my son. We've been shot at. Uh, my house window's been busted, my car being vandalized. When we see the stories of violence in our communities, be honest, how many of you assume that the people involved, at least in part, brought it on themselves in some way? But in many, arguably in most cases, that's just not true. Most of the people on the block, not caught up in anything. Just not, no, not that at all. It's just that the, the mill that's in the area, hanging out on the block so their, their enemies is coming to shoot at them so that's what they're all at risk. We spoke to numerous people who have either been impacted by gun violence or simply can't afford to move out of the neighborhoods that are. I don't know if the funds where I can just get up and move. If I can just get up and leave, I'm out of bill. I feel locked in. I got depression. Um, my anxiety is so high. I just, like... I don't even want to be here. They're terrified to speak because they say they're trapped in neighborhoods where as much as they want better, speaking up can cost you, or worse, your children, their lives. When people say that people in the neighborhood won't work with the police, they won't step up, they won't testify, tell me why. Because when they do testify, then, then what? They promise us, oh, we're going to help y'all, we're going to move y'all, we're going to relocate y'all. And he don't. My son wants to play basketball. It's days that I'm really big and cry. He's like, Mom, you, you trying to put me in a bubble. You gotta let me live my life. But I'm scared. I'm scared. Why, why, why can't I be scared to let my son go play basketball? He's a child. That's what kids are supposed to do. They spoke to us for a simple reason. They hope that hearing how people, good people, are forced to live and raise their children will make us want better for our neighbors, even if we're not personally affected yet. I tell them that I'm going to try, and I'm lying to them because I can't, because it's just me. So I just tell them, Mommy's going to protect us. We're going to get out of here one day, but that one day might be too late. I feel like there should be somewhere where they can help these parents, maybe like build something up where these parents can have somewhere to go, where they can feel safe. We're challenging all of us to figure out what small thing we can do that could lead to the type of change that can help to save our streets. Now that's the reality of too many adults, but what about the young people? Would it make you want to help more if you knew that it was innocent teens caught up in this violence who are guilty of nothing other than perhaps being born in the wrong zip code? For a 17-year-old in Philly, yeah, it's very scary. It should not be something that I would say is normal, but it's normal. It's, I feel as if it's not something that a 17-year-old kid or even a 16, 15, 14-year-old kid should have to really know. Like, it's not something that we should be introduced, and also this often. A lot of people expect me to be down about it, sad about it, but I look at it and I'm like, okay, I made it out alive. I was shot at 15 times, only got hit once in my hand. 
I got something to be thankful for, so I'm not going to just dwell on the past. If you're not bothered by teens talking so casually about being surrounded by gun violence and even being shot themselves, then something is really wrong. But yet and still, that's where we are. You know, stupidity arguments are just like worthless, honestly, because, you know, every day there's someone getting killed out there just because over internet beef. It pisses me off, to be honest, because it's like, why, re why resort to a gun? Why do I have to lose, why do a kid, why does a child have to lose their life because y'all can't seem to figure out a simple Argument. These young people are not involved in the so-called street life. They're students and part of a nonprofit trying to make things better. They're upset about what they face every day, but the thing that should bother all of us is that for the most part, the young people who we're supposed to be guiding and protecting, they think that most of us don't really care that they're surrounded by violence. They don't care about it. They see somebody get shot, as long as it's not one of their family members, they just they shrug it toss it up and just move on with their day. Unless it's somebody that they know or somebody that they have a past with, they won't care at all. If it's not their family member or anything, they, people don't care. And that's coming from a teen who himself was shot at 15 times in a likely case of mistaken identity, but he's not the only one wondering who's there for our teens. This has been happening for years and it's only getting worse. And we've been electing officials that are supposed to make it better, but they haven't been making it better. And so I think we have to, we gotta put some, a lot of accountability on them to really come in here and make some change. So these are their stories. They live in an environment that I hope all of us agree they shouldn't have to, but they also find themselves looking for solutions to problems that most of them are way too young to have played any real role in creating. But we're thinking, what can I do to help me not end up in the place that that person was at, to get out of this city, to get out of the violence. They need to make them solutions work because them solutions clearly aren't working. People are getting more and more guns. Younger people are getting more and more guns. I say stop judging. Stop judging kids. Talk to them. Get to know them. Like, you can't judge everybody by one person. I'm just hoping that everything does change because I want to go back to the normal living where it's like everyone can actually just go outside without having to worry about if you're going to get killed that day or like having your parents worry that you're going to get killed that day or something. These are the voices of our teens. They're looking for solutions and too many don't believe we care. Will we together step up and prove them wrong? And one of the common complaints that we hear when we start talking about the gun violence is there just aren't enough people who want to help. But there are some, people who rarely get the exposure but dedicate their lives every day to just trying to make things better. People say, oh, well, there's no father figure in the house, or there's no this, or there's no that. But there are more than enough men on the street that can apply themselves, that can help. See somebody out there, a young kid out there doing something wrong, you know, pull him to the side and try to talk to him. Because you know, that might be that one person you save their life and save them from doing something else that might ruin other families. It takes a village to raise a, ch raise a child. So, and I just want to be part of that village. Derek, Kaim, and Justin are car detailers with various experiences, good and bad, on the streets. I am a former perpetrator and survivor of gun violence. I know what it feels like. I know what decisions and associations lead you to think that the solutions lie in a gun. And they know they're not going to receive any judgment, but they're going to receive support. Because, you know, I've been in the streets my whole life for the most part since I was about 13. So now it's like I'm getting older. So. At 30, I don't want to be doing the same thing. You know what I mean? I don't want to be doing the same thing. I want to be doing something different or be, you know what I mean? Be a respectable person. Dr. Hassan Batts and Cameron are from the Allentown streets and are now working with a nonprofit to improve those same communities. All the community, real community leaders that are stepping up and getting real things done. We don't see that stuff on the news. We just see us killing each other, black and brown families, every day on the news across this country but we rarely ever see the good work that we're doing out here. Sister Talia has earned the trust of the community and now advocates to help those who feel stuck in crime and violence. All you have to do is have the will to serve the youth. And that's it, if you care a little bit enough, it's not hard to learn how to mentor or how to really be consistent in the youth life. It's not much. Ryan Harris runs a nonprofit with mentors like Sean in Hunting Park. <laughs> And Jeannie lost her son to gun violence before dedicating her life to saving someone else's child. Are you hopeful? Do you think we can fix this? I don't hope. Uh, 
We don't wish. Um, I know that with enough village support, things are going to turn around. Because I know that had I have gotten active, I could have saved my son. Take a long look, and you'll see that these people all come from different areas, have different backgrounds and experiences. They have almost nothing in common, except that they decided to make a difference. And that's really the point, for us to remember that the only way we're going to overcome young people who think that we feel this way. They don't care about it. They see somebody get shot, as long as it's not one of their family members, they just they shrug it, toss it up, and just move on with their day. Is to actively become people who feel and act this way. Just do your part. All of us actually do our job, use our gifts, use our talents, use our voices um, to actually bring about change. It won't be as hard. To get involved, saving one life, even if it's one life, you made a change in your community. One of the common responses that we hear from people when we're discussing violence is that it's not in their neighborhood, their block, or at their child's school. So they've almost become numb to it. So for all the people who are wondering, why should I personally care and get involved? Here's why. How many families are we gonna continue to fail? And you know, and that's what continues the gun violence in our neighborhoods. Our youth is the future. I mean, I have, three kids myself. Um, without the youth, what do we got to look forward to? It shouldn't be that complicated to understand why gun violence, especially gun violence affecting our children, that's a problem for all of us. And I have to, I can't give up because I still got kids to live for. And they still got a future. But it's like, what do I do? Like, I'm tired. I'm scared. I'm scared for them. I'm scared for myself. You should care because 15-year-olds are talking about dying just for walking through their neighborhoods, and mothers are desperately trying to keep kids safe. My son Kareem Fed was 17 years old. Um, he was murdered August 24, 2012. Came home from work and found him murdered in his bed here in Allentown. Just tell somebody to get out the streets because you're going to die. That doesn't that doesn't really help. You know what I mean? Because we know that. You know what I mean? We all know that every day give us a way out. You should care because you don't want to see any more parents deal with the pain that Jeannie feels every day and the frustration Cameron feels with the lack of opportunities for people who are really looking for them. Well, I always tell people I'm not a motivational speaker, I'm a motivational doer. I can tell you one thing, I can show you different. I can show you better than I can tell you. We need to be more focused on the good points of what we're doing in the communities, more resources that we're providing instead of just talking about the shootings. Let's get out there, let's knock on these doors, let's find out what's going on each and every home. And we pretty much just taught them the things that they don't want in school, how to be entrepreneurs, how to be self-aware, how to navigate through these streets, all of those things that you need that you probably won't get from school. You should care because Derek, Sister Talia and Ryan They've shown that caring actually works, and you should care because our children are watching. If kids need to talk, they should talk. If adults need to listen, they should listen. Because there'd be sometimes it'd be the kids that have a lot to say, don't say it because parent teachers or adults aren't listening. So now we've explored the issue, and hopefully you understand why we launched the Save Our Streets initiative. But what now? I'm Bill Anderson, and on behalf of everyone who participated in putting this special together, I leave you with one question. What will you do? Think about it, and hopefully we'll act. Have a good one.